Father in heaven, the truth of your love, the greatness of it, the grandeur of it, as described in this song, it's wonderful. Too much for me to truly comprehend. Today I give you praise and honor and glory for being God. Above all, a God who's present everywhere, who is all-powerful, and who is all-knowing. And today we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory for being our God, our Father. I pray for Pastor Bob as he comes and brings your word to us today. I pray that the, the work that he put in to study and to prepare his heart and mind for this day would bear fruit, that you would be with him as he expounds on the truth of your word to bring forth fruit in our hearts and lives. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning. morning. Bless the Lord, I'm back. (laughs) Just just like a bad penny, keep showing up. It's a joy to be back. Uh, Pastor Johnny got a hold of me this week and asked me if I could, and he wasn't quite up to, to fill in the pulpit, and it's a joy for, for me to be here. Janet and I, we do like coming. And You know, I told you last week, I've got all these messages during retirement that I've been working on, and that, uh, you know, I'm just waiting for a chance to, to preach them. Guess what God did? Gave me a brand new message. Those are still on the shelf, and uh, he gave me a brand new message for this morning. And trust that God's going to to use it for his glory. But uh, he is is God, isn't he? Amen. Yeah, bless his name. Bless his name. So good to to know him. This morning I want to share a message with you. It's called Undeniable. It comes from the passage of of, uh, uh, the ninth chapter of the book of John. And it's a story about the blind man. And, uh, uh, you know, darkness is, is really quite something to comprehend, isn't it? Have you ever been in a place where it's been totally dark? I mean, so dark that you can't even see your hand in front of your face. Uh, years and years ago, we were vacationing, and, and I'm not even sure where we were, but we had the opportunity to go through a cave, and we'd never gone through a cave. And you know like what they like to do when you get in the cave? Shut the lights out. And wow, was it dark. And then, you know, they had this one little light that, that was lit, and wow, it just illuminated everything. But, you know, and it, you felt so much better with that, just that one little light. So darkness can be a scary, dangerous place. It can be dangerous in this. You don't know where you're going. Uh, years ago, when we were first married, we lived in a, in a farmhouse, and it was, had a lot of doors in this farmhouse. And, and uh, there were two doors to our bedroom. One to the hallway that led to the bathroom and living room, dining room, and another one that led out to the kitchen. Well, for some reason that night, I'd gone to, to bed early, and it, no moon that night. It was a dark night. And when Janet came, she shut the doors. And now the telephone was in the dining room. And I think you probably maybe already guessed where this is going. When that phone rang in the middle of the night, and when the phone rings in the middle of the night, that's never a good sign, is it? Man, I jumped up out of bed, and I had to go around the foot of the bed, and I was going to go down the hall and right into the door. And I kind of staggered back, you know, and did it again. Because <laughs> that door wasn't supposed to be shut. You know, we never kept that door shut. And uh, I, I don't know, if, I don't remember if I got to the phone in time, but, you know, that door stopped me right in my tracks twice. That's how smart I am. <laughs> but, you know, that, that, that darkness, that door shut, you know, the darkness of it, and, and it's all around. And the comfort of just a small light. Uh, grandchildren and, and our children for years wanted a night light. One of the night light, just that comforting light that if you wake up, you know, that you, you can tell everything is okay. Well, in John chapter 9, narrative of the blind man that uh, we, we have here, Jesus was going by and there was a blind man, and, and the disciples uh, were asked, who caused this blindness? The, was, he was born blind, so he had never seen. 
I said, who caused it? Did sin cause this? Did his parents sin? Did he sin? And, and, and Jesus said that, that no one had, had uh, no, sin had not caused this, this blindness, but it was going to reveal the glory of God. Now, in Scripture, we want to understand that darkness is a metaphor for evil or unbelief. When, when, you, when you read the Scripture and, and you read about the, the darkness and the concept of darkness, it, it, it holds evil and, and it's a place of, of, of unbelief. Jesus points out that, that sin had not caused this man's blindness, but yet he was blind. His world was totally dark. Jesus makes clear that there's two realms of darkness leaving people blind to light. The physical, which we're all very well aware of, and spiritual. There's spiritual blindness. In this passage, Jesus is demonstrating that his disciples, the darkness uh, allowing one to be blind to see, and, and that he was going to reveal that he is the light for both realms, the physical as well as, as the spiritual. He declares in verse 5 that he is the undeniable light that dispels darkness. It's amazing when you read the story, and we're going to here in just a little bit, it's amazing how he gave this man his sight. Now, one of the things we want to notice is that, that Jesus didn't restore sight to him by healing him. He gave him sight Something he had never experienced before. We know that Jesus is the great healer and someone that is blind, that they become blind in their lifetime, their sight can be restored. God can do a miracle. I remember when I was in India a number of years ago, Dr. Pronoy Sarkar, the president of the missionary church and I, were going around and we stopped at this one home and in it was this young teenage girl who had a tremendously severe eye infection. And the doctor said that there's nothing we can do. She is going to go blind. Well, Dr. Sarkar asked me, he said, can we pray for her? Would you pray with me? So we anointed her and prayed for her, and God did a wonderful miracle in that young girl's life. And Dr. Sarkar told me months after we had returned to the States that God had touched her, and she was perfectly well and could see. So we know God can, can do the, the physical as well as the spiritual, that he is the undeniable one who dispels it. And so he gave him his sight. Now the way he did it was unusual. He spat on the ground and made clay and put it on the guy's eyes and, tells, and then tells him to, to go and, and wash in a pool of Siloam, which, which means scent. And, and that pool had uh, been built by King Hezekiah some 700 years earlier and was the purest water in Jerusalem. But why did he do that? I don't know. <laughs> and nor, nor do the scholars. There's a lot of, lot of things that are being said that why it might have been that way. That, you know, man was created from, from dust and, and clay, and, and that, so that, that's one idea. And then there's even another idea that, that the, in that day people thought that, that power came from saliva. You know, and, but why Jesus did it that way, we don't know. But he did, and the man's sight was restored. It was restored completely. Now, that was witnessed by his neighbors. That was witnessed by what was happening in, in the, the crowd that very likely was there, and, and people were talking about it. And this event was, was undeniable. God had done a tremendous work in this man's life to give him sight when he had never, ever experienced seeing no one had ever done that. That was completely unheard of. And, and there were, there, no one had ever done it. And still some people didn't believe it. They saw it with their own eyes. They didn't believe it. And we see now that, that, that as they didn't believe, the man who was uh, given sight certainly believed. And oh my, can you just imagine the joy? The excitement? Uh, and the, the, this man that is now seeing, and he was crediting Jesus. He was saying, Jesus did it. This man, by the name of Jesus, gave me my sight for the first time. Verse 11 tells us, for the first time, he was able to see, and he gave Jesus the glory. He gave Jesus the credit. 
And this didn't go unnoticed. This didn't go unnoticed, and it came to the attention of the Pharisees, the religious uh, rulers. And they questioned the man because of, his, uh, of this, and, and it all had taken place. And believe it or not, it had taken place on the Sabbath. And boy, I tell you, in those days, and in the Jewish tradition, in Judaism, you don't do that good stuff. You don't do anything on the Sabbath. And so this was already an issue for the religious leaders of the day. But the man had been given sight. There was, there was no doubt about that. It's interesting to see as, as this story unfolds that the opposition toward Jesus by the Pharisees and the religious leaders was so strong that it wouldn't allow them to be happy for the man who had been born blind but now sees. Isn't that sad? Isn't that sad? Something that God has done, never before had it been seen, never before had, had it occurred, and there were people that were so opposed to Jesus that they couldn't be happy for the man who now had sight. It says a lot, doesn't it? It says a lot. But it was undeniable that this man had, had been blind, but now he had the sight, and that Jesus was the one who was responsible. Bless the Lord. Really? You know, our Jesus, there isn't anything he can't do. Really? There isn't anything God can't do. Jesus himself said, you know, all things are possible. Only believe. Only believe. God can do it all. Nothing is too difficult for God. Now, trying to explain all this caused a great deal of, of controversy and, and concern with the, the leaders. And the leaders wanted to pin something on Jesus so that they could stop him because people were being drawn to Jesus. People were believing what Jesus said about the kingdom of God and, and demonstrating the love of God for, for people. And, and people were believing in, in Jesus and they were following Jesus. And, and the, the Pharisees and religious leaders wanted to pin something on him to get him to stop being so popular. Get him to, to not be so, so dr uh, dramatic in, in what he did and the miracles that he was doing. And, and they wanted the attention put back on them. The religious leaders even called in the parents of the guy. This, this guy's an older guy. He, he's lived a while, and they brought the parents in, and, and, and they affirm, yeah, he's our son. And uh, they said, uh, yeah, he was born blind, uh, and, and now he sees, but uh, we, we don't know how that happened. Ask him. He's of age. <laughs> you know, he's old enough, you just ask him. You know, the parents were fearful of being put out of the synagogue. If they would have said, yeah, this is Jesus, and this is God doing this to the Pharisees, can you imagine what would happen? They, they would have been excommunicated from the synagogue. And, and we have to understand that the, the synagogue was the center. It was community. Uh, it was community. It'd be like the, the congregation here in, in some ways. That God did something that's really great, and we testified to it, and we got kicked out for doing it. And not only kicked out, but could not associate with the people that were excommunicated. And so there was a lot of pressure on them. There was a lot of pressure on them. And so they, they say, well, you talk to him. And I'd like to pick up our reading now in John chapter 9 at verse 24. And, and we read these words. So for the second time, they summons the man who had been blind and said to him, give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. If you referring to Jesus. He then answered, whether he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I know, though, I was blind. Now I see. So they said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? And he answered them, I told you already. And you didn't, did you not listen? Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciple too? <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Whoa, that's something to say to the religious leaders, isn't it? Boy, that had to smart. You know, do you want to become his follower too? Here, this guy that had been touched by God. 
who from, from birth had never seen anything, and now he was seeing. And he was seeing more clearly than the, the Pharisees were even seeing. And he says, do you want to become his disciple too? Now they spoke abrasively at him. You are his disciple, and we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he is from. There's the key, folks. There's the key. They did not know God well enough to recognize his son. And that was their problem. They didn't recognize Jesus as the fulfillment of the words of the prophets as God had given the prophets to speak. They claimed to know God, but they really didn't know. It's like like today knowing about God, but not knowing God. The man answered, and he said to them, Well, here is an amazing thing that you do not know where he is from, and yet he opened my eyes. Folks, this guy was schooling the religious leaders of the day. He, he, he was making it very plain what God had done for him and what God could do and who it was that is God. We know that God does not listen to sinners, they, the Pharisee said, but if someone is God-fearing and does his will, he will listen to them. Since the beginning of time, it has never been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person. Right there was the proof, isn't it? Right there is the proof that God opens the eyes of the blind. That God dispels darkness. And and in this man's life, it was physical. And that's what they were all upset about. But there was a deeper thing. It was spiritual too. It was a spiritual eye-opening event for this man. And what an awesome answer. What an awesome answer this this man. Indisputable evidence of this man as he stood before them. He says, one thing I know, I was blind, but now I see. People cannot, people cannot say that what God's done in your life isn't true. Amen? Amen. They cannot say, they can argue, they can say, I don't believe it, but they cannot say that what God does in a person's life isn't really happening and isn't really true. That's the beauty of our testimony. That's the beauty of our confession of who Jesus Christ is, of who he is and what he can do. To know that you know that you know is powerful, it's liberating, and it's assuring. Oh, to know God, to know God has worked in my life To know that that, that whatever the situation, whatever the circumstances, whatever it is that's going on in my life, that God can intervene in my life and take care of the issue. Amen. Amen. See, that's the God we serve. That's the Jesus that God sent to be our Savior. Now, Jesus hears about what's happening and taking place and that the man had been put out that he'd been put out of the synagogue. And the next words of Jesus addresses the, the remedy for the spiritual blindness, which is divine light. The remedy for spiritual blindness is divine light. Light for the spiritual blind comes through belief in Jesus as the Son of God. John chapter 9, verse 35. Jesus heard that they had put him out, and upon finding him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered by saying, And who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? And Jesus said to him, You have both seen him, and he is the one who is talking with you. And he said, I believe, Lord, and he worshiped him. There it is, folks. Both realms come together. Jesus dispelled the darkness in the physical. He opened his eyes so he could see. Jesus opened his eyes to the spiritual that he believed on the Son of God and he worshiped him. So different than what the Pharisees was doing in their approach. 
And Jesus said, For judgment I came into this world so that those who do not see may see and those who see may become blind. Those who were with him from the Pharisees heard these things and and said to him, We are not blind too, are we? And Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now that you maintain, we see your sin remains. There again, they knew all about God. They had, they had the records from, from the Old Testament and, and, and Judaism of, of what God had done, but they had not experienced what God could do in their life. It's one thing to know about God. It's quite another to know God, to know him, to believe in him, and to trust in him. Rejection of Jesus is spiritual blindness. It's spiritual blindness. And spiritual blindness thrives when individuals refuse to come into the light from out of the darkness through faith in Jesus as the Son of God. Reason God, the darkness is is in the world It's because people won't put their faith in God through Jesus Christ the Son. It's the reason for the darkness in the world today. As it has always been. As it has always been. In John 3, the same author, in John 3, 19, 21 says, This is the verdict that light, Jesus, has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Not ba- their deeds weren't based on faith, on belief in the Son of God. And so their deeds by God were deemed evil. Everyone who does evil or fails to believe hates the light and will not come into the light for fear their deeds will be exposed. Here speaks to the motive of the actions. And and the Bible tells us and Jesus has told us over and over over that the motives stem from the heart. Jesus was asked, what defiles a man? And you know, when he was going through the grain and not washing his fields and they were eating and not washing their hands, Jesus was asked about being defiled. And he says, it's not what you put in your mouth that processed through your body but it's what comes out of the heart. It's what comes out of the heart. That's why the work of God through faith in Jesus Christ is a heart issue. Because the motives that we have stem from our heart. And that's why why David in Psalm 51 in his prayer said, God created me a clean heart. A clean heart. Verse 21, but whoever lives by truth comes into the light so that it may be plainly that that what he has done has been done through God. It's been said there is no such, no, no, so blind as those who will not see. And that's, that's the story of humanity. To be born again, To have our eyes open spiritually, we have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. To know God, you have to know Jesus. John tells us that. Nobody comes to the Father except through Jesus. Jesus gave, or God gave Jesus to us so that we could know him and he could take us to the Father. Spiritual eyes of faith are found in the heart. In the heart. The words of Stan Yoder, a missionary uh, in the missionary church, he, he said this years ago, and it's, it's never left me. He said, connecting to God is not a matter of distance, but rather darkness. Mm-hmm. Whoa, was he right? You know, sometimes we say people, you know, are so far from God. Their life is, is, is just spiraling out of control, and they're so far from God. And it's really not a matter of distance. It's about darkness. And having their, their spiritual eyes open to the things of God. 
And you know, each one of us, before we came to know Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior, we were spiritually blind. Oh, we may have known, known about God. We may have known that, yeah, there's a God. But until we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and were born again and, and saved by the shed blood of, of Jesus, we were spiritually blind to the things of God. We couldn't understand the word when we read it. But when we came to know Christ, we began to understand what God was saying in his word. Darkness never reveals truth, but light always does. After we have moved from spiritual darkness to light uh, of Jesus and truly see who he is, then we can witness and bear witness to the works of of God in our life and, and all around us. Interesting, those neighbors who knew this man for all of his life, and now he could see they weren't sure he, could, he was the same man. Isn't that amazing? It's because what was done was such a miraculous thing. Hard to comprehend. With our eyes wide open, we can see the works of God. We can worship God like that the man did and living in our life by obeying God. Wouldn't it have been something when Jesus spat on the uh, ground and made the clay and put it on his eyes and he said, go wash? If he, what if he wouldn't have done that? What if he wouldn't obeyed Jesus and gone and washed? Probably wouldn't have seen, would he? This is an undeniable truth based in Jesus, the Son of God. In our world today, There's a lot of darkness, and we all could admit to that. The answer is and always will be Jesus Christ and faith in him because he changes the heart of men and women, boys and girls. It's belief in him. He gives every believer the sight needed to be a witness of the kingdom things that are happening in our lives and around us in the midst, in the midst of all we've experienced through the pandemic and, and, and this last year and, and all, all the crises that we may ever experience. If we open our eyes and look, we can see what God is doing. It is so easy and, and we all are, are susceptible to it and we all find ourselves doing it is looking at our surroundings and seeing the circumstances and seeing all the bad things about it that so we don't notice the good things that God's doing. I'm guilty of that. We get so caught up with the events and things going on we fail to see God at work in them and in us. And we just have to be reminded that we are not part of the world. Jesus said in John chapter 17 in his prayer that he wasn't part of the world and we aren't part of the world, but yet we live here. He gives every believer the sight needed to witness the kingdom things going on in both the physical and the spiritual through eyes that are open spiritually to the things of God, to the things of God. I've got a challenge for us as we close this morning. I've got a challenge for us, and and that challenge for each of us is share with someone this week something you have personally experienced from God during this pandemic that is indisputable. Will you do that? Will you take that challenge? Now, that, that means that this week we, we get up on, on Monday or maybe even this afternoon after we leave here, we, we begin looking, opening our spiritual eyes to what God is doing around us. And it, it, it can come in a very, very uh, distinct way. It can be something that seems so minor, but yet it was God. And let's get our eyes off of the darkness of the world and on the light of God and what he's doing in our lives and in the lives of the people that we love and care for that he might get the glory. What are we seeing? What are we seeing? Let's see with the eyes that have been opened by Jesus to the spiritual things of God in our own lives. And let the light of Jesus in us 
be bright and shine in the darkness. Father God, this morning in the name of Jesus, thank you for who you are. And Father, thank you for what you have done for each of us through Jesus Christ, your son. Father, in in many cases, you have, in our physical life and in our physical world, you have touched us and, and you have restored us and you have healed us and you have helped us. But greater still, Father, for everyone who knows Jesus Christ as their Savior, you have opened our spiritual eyes to the things of God, to the kingdom of God. So, Father, I pray this morning that that as, as we hear today, realize again that we are not part of this world, but we belong to you. Father, may we, as individuals this week, see the things of the kingdom around us that are happening to give you glory. Just like the blind man, after he had been given his sight, said, this I know, I was blind, but now I see. Father, help each one of us to see what you're doing and give you the glory. And as the blind man did, he said he believed to Jesus and he worshiped him. Father, let a part of our worship this week be seeing what you're doing for your glory and your honor. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thanks for coming today. Thanks for allowing Janet and I to be here and have just a great week and happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. God bless you.